Okay, here's another uh, truss problem. You can see from the statement that we just want the force in BC, CG, and GF. And I went ahead and marked those with these little squiggly lines. Again, you can see that forms uh, a nice little section that we could cut. So again, we want to look at what we want to do the left side or the right side. Um, you guys have any, any choice? We could do a quick accounting here. The right side has two forces. The left side has one. So maybe I'm leaning left right now. Uh, the reaction, well, there are two unknowns at the pin, only one at E. That might balance it. But what do you can see already about your force in the X direction here? It's probably going to be zero. zero. So that really won't account for anything. So maybe I'll go uh, left. So if I go left, I want my reactions at A. I'm going to save some time and use this as my free body diagram initially and replace the pin with unknowns in the X and Y direction and then the roller E in the Y direction. So again, I'm trying to find my things at A reactions at A, so I'm going to do all my work, some moments basically, about E. So again, using right-hand rule for my sign convention, I'm going to sum the moments about E and set it equal to zero. Okay, looking at my three forces, uh, this 500-pound force passes through E, so it creates no moment. But the 800 and the 500 create what, positive or negative moment? Positive. I'll start with the 800 pound first. So I'll have 800 pounds and its moment arm is 10. And then I'll have 500 pounds and its moment arm is 20. And then I'll have my reaction at AY which is creates negative moment and it has a moment arm of 20. So it looks like the answer is 900. That sound okay, Mr. Gargas? I haven't caught up yet. Oh, still drawing the picture. Sorry about that. I should have let you guys have some time. I apologize. Anybody else can check this out? I think it's going to be 900. That would be pounds. There's a couple of ways to see that. Um, again, you'll notice the load is symmetric. And the geometry is symmetric, so if you add the total load up, you get 1,800 pounds, half to one side, 900, half to the other side, 900. Does that make sense? Okay, so now I'm ready to draw my free body diagram for this chosen left-hand side. So I'll come up here and say, here's my free body uh, diagram, and I'll draw this piece, vertical, Not to scale, but you get the idea. So at the bottom here, I have my reaction force. Oh, I did make a mistake. Let's go back and uh, clean that up. I didn't solve for AX. I should have. It won't take us very long to do because if you do some forces in the x direction, make sure it's an equilibri equilibrium. The only force you have is AX, so it has to be zero. So back to my free body of the left-hand side, uh, this top force is going to be the force in the BC. This force will be um, CG, and this force will be FG. Yes? Um, your general rule of thumb is if you would have found AY to be um, in, in tension or you know, negative, you would have fixed it here. I would have fixed it because I'm drawing a brand new free body. But I, I never go back and change my original free body. If, once you make these assumptions and you write all your equations, if you do get a negative value, just plug it in negative wherever you need it. When you draw a new free body, you can reorient them any way you like. 
But even though I know that one of these is going to be in compression, I never in my forces for bars consider that. Because I want to follow that positive number is tension, negative number is compression to match our other work in SAP 2000. Oh, I did forget something here at the top, which would have made a difference. Um, that 500 pound load. I think that's all I need. Um, since we did it before, I'll go ahead and and connect the fact that these do share a point at C. And we can see that B, C, C, G, we know they're going to have be concurrent at C. So I went ahead and just put that in there to help you out. So with that said, uh, how should we proceed? Should I sum forces in the X direction? Uh, no. Not as a starter, because I have one X component here, one X component here, one. That's three unknowns, one equation. Not a good place to start. How about summing forces in the Y direction? That would work. Only uh, CG has a Y component. One equation, one unknown. Okay. Now, what about our moments? Where should we take moments? Well, I kind of gave one away by showing you C, but there's also another one here at um, G. I'll go ahead and put our labels in. Everybody see that? So I can sum moments about C and find FG. I can sum moments about G and find BC, and then I can sum forces in the Y direction and find CG. Okay? See, we took a little minute. We thought through our strategy. Everything seems good. So let's do our mechanics. Uh, I'll start with, since we brought it up, I'll sum moments about C first. Make sure everybody's in equilibrium. So about C, what's the moment arm to the force FG, and is it positive or negative moment? It's positive. And what's the moment arm? It would be this distance five, here. Five feet. It's five feet. Everybody see that from the geometry? Ten feet, and with everything being square, this would be halfway. So I've accounted for that. Then I have this 500-pound force about C creates also positive moment. And what's the moment arm there? Ten feet. And then I have my reaction force, 900, that creates positive or negative? Negative. negative. And what's its moment arm? Ten feet. So I should be able to find the force in FG, and I think it's going to be positive. That's 900 minus 500 is 400 divided by 5 is 87.5? I don't know. Is that right? Did I do that right? 2,800. Oh, divided by... Is that right? 9,000, 5,000 is... Four, oh, 4,000. What's 4,000 divided by 5? 800 exactly? Yeah. Yeah. And that comes out positive. That sound good? Does it make sense that this would be intention? I think so. Your 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 point E is going to move to the right or to the left? It's going to move to the right. So this whole bottom cord is going to have to stretch if that happens. The top cord is going to Compress, so we should expect BC to be in compression. So how do we find BC? I'm sorry, I said BC. Yeah, BC. How can I find BC? One equation. Some moments about G. So right-hand rule for a sign convention. Well, some moments about G equal to zero for equilibrium. So let's. How does what kind of moment does BC create about G? Positive or negative? negative? Negative. And what is the moment arm from G to the line of action BC? Five. Then I got to deal with these two guys. 
again, right? So what about the 500 pound force? Positive or negative? Positive. Positive. And its moment arm? Five. And then the 900 is? Negative. negative. And its moment arm is? Five. Everybody's five. I can kill the fives off. It looks like BC is going to be equal to negative 400. Okay, that kind of matched our insight at the beginning. So what are we left with? CG. And we decided earlier that the easiest way to get that was to sum forces in the y direction. So let's do that. So I need to know this uh, rise over run here. What is it? Looks like it goes up 10 and over 10. So that's 1 to 1. So that means the hypotenuse would be square root of 2. So the y component would be 1 over the square root of 2. And it's acting up. So that's positive. C G. What else do we have in the y direction? We have our reaction 900 pound force up and our load 500 pound force <laughs> down. So it looks like that's going to be 400. What's 400 times the square root of 2? That sounds good to me. And it came out in compression. Does that make sense that it would be in compression? Yes. I, I think so. These, these areas here are kind of being pushed down. That force should flow down. I like that. I think that looks good. Any questions about that?